Hey guys, Scott here. So before we dive into doing the fill stripping and cleaning of the Gerson Disruptor, let's just go over the four safety rules of firearms. Of course, we treat all every firearm as though they're loaded. We keep the finger off the trigger until we're ready to fire. We do not point a firearm at anyone or anything that we do not want to destroy or kill, and that we are conscious or aware of what's behind those targets. So those are the four safety rules that we go through. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure this firearm is not loaded. So we'll drop the magazine, no ammo there. We'll lock the slide back and check the chamber. Look down the mag well, there's no f ammo in there. So we are good to go there. So <clears throat> before we get going here, definitely hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, my subscribers are going up. It's definitely my videos are getting out there. So definitely the more subscribers I have, the more videos you'll see of mine. So definitely do hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. So to field strip this, we're gonna go ahead and we'll start by removing the thread protector. And this is a similar takedown to a Smith & Wesson. So you guys, if you have a Smith & Wesson, you should, it's no issue. But if this is your first time, this is your first firearm and you're trying to learn from here. So this lever here is similar to a Smith & Wesson and other firearms. So basically what you're gonna do so you're going to lock it back, you're going to take that takedown lever there, you're going to release the slide lock, pull the trigger, and then everything comes apart. And then from here, you're going to, well, let's put the frame on here, you're going to take the recoil spring, take that out, and you're going to pop the barrel out, and that is fuel stripping the Gerson. And at the end of this, once we clean it, we'll do putting it back together again. So for those of you are new to firearms and this is your first time and you're trying to learn and this is your first gun and about cleaning, what, what do you need? There's different variations of what people use and what you need. Uh, for myself, this is something I'm using new. It's called Aegis Gun Care. Uh, they're based out of Idaho. Everything's made and tested in the United States. Uh, prior to this, I was using Breakthrough Clean. I wanted to give these guys um, a try. I met them at the GOA conference, and I'll provide a link, everything I'm showing here down below. Uh, and they have a lubricant. They just use a two-step two process. They do not use CLP. So, and then they have a lubricant, and this lubricant is a nanotechnology type lubricant. So it will be absorbed into the, uh, into the firearm. <clears throat> um, if I'm doing a deep clean and I'm gonna store the firearm, I will use a bore cleaner, and this one here is Bortec. This one is highly recommended by uh, precision shooters and all that. So this is also, it's not ammonia based, so really good. Um, you're gonna want, you know, you can use a brush. These are, you know, brushes for firearms. Uh, you can use a pick here. You're gonna want a bore brush. So I have here, these are J. Dewey bore brushes. They're nylon. This one's for a nine millimeter. I also have this one. This one, along with this Jag, came with my Canik. I use this quite a bit, uh, just especially for quick cleaning. It just does a great job and all that. And then if you need, you know, this rod here is a little bit longer. And then you could attach this bore brush here. And then there's also a Jag attachment for that. Um, also you're gonna need are Q-tips. And I use them, don't need them. This is but what I use. And like I said, I would love to hear below what you guys are using and, and provide. And then you're gonna want patches, uh, lint-free, cotton, you know, 100% cotton, just to make sure you don't want any lint here. I can't remember who I was talking to, but they took out a firearm from their their safe and all that. And it, the outside was coated with lint and I forget why it was. And when he opened, took it apart, just to oil it, make sure, you know, everything was good, wasn't dry. He said there was lint everywhere inside of it too. So he's glad he you know, checked it before he took it to the range. Um, when I also am in a store for a long time, I will use a silicone cloth. And I guess I'm a little anal. When I'm doing it, I will use cotton gloves just to keep my the oils from my hands off the firearm because I'm gonna store it for a while. So those are the things I use. So let's go ahead and let's just get going here. Oh, and of course, you're gonna want latex, not latex, non-latex gloves. 
uh, surgical gloves. And let's go ahead and put these on. Let's move these. So I would start off with the barrel because I like to let the uh, cleaner have a chance to sit there and soak on it. So I'll spray it in there. I'll spray the recoil spring. You know, with the, the, the thread protector. And then of course I would give it a, a spray here on the, uh, on the slide. Just move that out of the way. Then I would take my my brush here, give it a good cleaning. On the outside, um, this is where I would use the pick, is to get in the uh, in here along the rail. Um, But each person, like I said, has their own process and all that of what to do. And then that, take my finger with it, pull it out. And then with the uh, Q-tip, give it a little spray. And this is where I like to use Q-tips and all that. And this is kind of nicer than CLP because it's not very thick. So I'm not worried about getting it into the firing pin area there. So give it a quick clean. And then I might do it in here. And then again, just kind of dry it off, get the excess off, even on the outside. Then when it comes to the barrel, I will take the jag, put a patch on. I've got the patch and then I, of course, let me do this first, take the bore brush, run it through couple of times and then I would take the jag run that through get in the excess cleaning and as you can see it's pretty clean there and then with the um, recoil spring again I would use the brush and then I would use a shop cloth here get off the excess and so that's cleaning the uh, the slide and all that the slide assemblies and then with the frame again I would just give it a squirt and get the brush give it a good cleaning there and again this is where I would use a q-tip I'm able to get down in here make sure there's to get any of the buildup going on in there so that's why I like the using Q-tips for getting in the magwell and all that. You know, just some areas there, try to get as much clean as possible in there. Anywhere you see nooks and crannies that you can reach. Then again, you know, you're gonna take a patch, wipe it down, and this stuff dries nicely. There's, cause it is not a lubricant or a protector. So that's kind of nice. Um, I think I like this process a little bit better using just a cleaner and then providing a lubricant afterwards. But definitely, well, hey, that's another one I like to hear. You know, what's your opinion on CLPs and all that? So that's all clean. Now it's time to um, add lubricant. So on the frame, you're going to look for spots that you're seeing uh, friction points. And I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll try to bring it up. But there's a friction points here, here here, here, so that's where metal is touching metal. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to put some spots. And, and so I'll put a little bit here. I always put a drop there. I like to use on that part there. And usually I'll make sure it's not heavy coated, but it does have a, a slight layer on there. And it looks like here on the slide locks, there's a little friction there. So you're gonna look for the friction points and anywhere there's metal. And then on the, let's put that aside, then on the slide. I mean, I like putting a, a drop in here for the barrel and then I'll run a little bit down the rails. 
Um, put a little bit here, and since this is nano, I'll just spread it out. Just not heavy, just to keep some friction, you know, keep that friction down. And then on the barrel, of course, it's being threaded. I'll throw a little bit on the thread. I'll throw a little bit up here. And this is why you want to have gloves so when you, you can do this and not worry about the chemical reaction and all that. I'll put a little bit drop up here, and like I said, and it coats it nicely. We'll see how this works going forward. And then, of course, you want to do some on the recoil spring and that there. Now, the thread protector, I'm not going to do any because I did some on the thread, so... Then you're gonna put the, put it back, assembly everything up. Oh, ah, there we go. That in there. Put your recoil spring back in. You can put the put that on now or later. It's up to you. And the one thing I'm finding with this is make sure your hand is on this on the takedown lever so it stays forward. I've been finding a couple of times. It starts to kick back and then everything locks up. So if you can keep that there, it makes a lot of things a lot easier. So then you're going to here, just go ahead, bring it back on. And once you get it on and get the slide, then you're going to go ahead and bam. And you do it, check the firing. Make sure the safety works on the toggle there. So that's basically it, guys. That's cleaning the, this fuel stripping and cleaning it. And then here you just might want to just wipe it down a little bit, the frame. And if you need to, you know, you can always take and wipe down your magazines. But like I said, this one's pretty new, so I don't have a lot of rounds running through it. So that is it. So definitely guys, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and share this. And I do want to hear your comments on what you guys use for, you know, cleaning your firearms and tools and all that. And and what's your, if you use Aegis, I would definitely love to hear what you guys think of Aegis Gun Care. All right, guys, have a good one. Have a good one and be safe, all right?